So last time we talked about the origin of the cyclic potentiometer shape, which is the interplay between the diffusion control and the applied potential, right? So here we can learn how to analyze the cyclic potentiometer shape. Because the cyclic potentiometer here has two peaks, so we can analyze both peaks in terms of the potential and the current. The first peak is the anodic peak, right? So we can analyze it in terms of the peak current and the peak potential. The peak, the height of this peak is then called the anodic peak current or IPA. And the position of this peak is called the anodic peak potential or EPA. In contrast, in terms of the reduction or the cathodic peak, the height of the reverse peak here is called cathodic peak current or IPC, and the position of this peak is called cathodic peak potential or EPC. So here you can see that we can obtain anodic peak potential, anodic peak current, cathodic peak potential, and cathodic peak current. And usually these data analysis software can give you uh, all these four parameters. Extra information that we can obtain from the anodic and cathodic peak potential is that we can approximate the standard electrode potential or the formal potential of the electroactive species to be the middle point or the average between the anodic peak potential and cathodic peak potential. So formal potential or standard electrode potential is equal to EPA plus EPC divided by two. For example, if the EPA is zero volt and EPC is minus 0 0.2 volt, then the formal potential of the electroactive species is minus 0 0.1 volt. Just for the completion, we can see that we, in cyclic voltammetry, we scan the potential to both sides, right? We scan to the positive, and then we scan back to the negative. There is also the technique which you, which you scan in only one direction, like just scan from negative to positive potential, or just positive to negative potential. The technique that scan in only one direction is called linear sweep voltammetry or LSV, which you can also get the same information as the cyclic voltammetry, but only half of it. Like for cyclic voltammetry, you get both oxidation and reduction, but for linear sweep voltammetry, you get only either oxidation or reduction, depends on the scanning direction. So now we're going to learn how to analyze or interpret the simple cyclic voltammetry because these uh, usually the cyclic voltammetry can tell you the redox mechanism of the interested electroactive species. So here we're going to just concern the uh, simple types of the cyclic voltammetry shape. The first type we call it reversible reaction or reversible electron transfer. Reversible reaction or reversible electron transfer means that there is no kinetic or chemical barrier for electrooxidation or reduction, which means that your electroactive species can easily undergo oxidation and reduction without any other uh, process to interrupt it. How do you know that the electroactive species undergoes reversible reaction? First, you can consider from its anodic peak current and cathodic peak current. If it has equal IPA and IPC, then you can guess that it is reversible reaction. So that's the first criteria. The second criteria is that the delta EP, which is EPA minus EPC, needs to equal to 57 over N or 59 over N millivolt in order to call it reversible reaction. The third criteria is that changing the scan rate in cyclic voltammetry waveform does not change the delta EP of the reversible reaction. So here, is, this is the example of the reversible CV. You can see that the anodic peak and cathodic peak is uh, equal in terms of the size and the position is uh, very close to each other, like 57 over N millivolt. So this is the first type, which is the reversible reaction. The second type of the redox mechanism here is called quasi-reversible reaction. Quasi means like semi or pseudo, which is kind of sort of reversible, but not really. So what does it mean? It means that these species can actually 
undergoes oxidation and reduction in both directions, but there is some kinetic barrier so that it is not like perfectly reversible. So that's why we call it quasi-reversible reaction. And how, we, how can we know that it is quasi-reversible reaction? The first criteria is that IPA is approximately the same as IPC. So this is actually similar to reversible CV. IPA is similar or equal to IPC. But the second criteria that distinguishes the quasi-reversible reaction from the perfectly reversible reaction is the delta EP. The delta EP of the quasi-reversible reaction is not ideal, which means that it is not 57 or 59 over n millivolt. So you can see from the example CV of the quasi-reversible here, you can see that although the anodic and cathodic peak current is almost the same, but the peak distance is a lot. The delta EP is almost like 500 millivolt here. So it is quasi-reversible reaction. You can also see here the right diagram here, compare between the reversible and quasi-reversible uh, reaction. You can see that the reversible and quasi-reversible reaction, the anodic peak current and cathodic peak current is approximately the same, but the delta EP of the quasi-reversible reaction is a lot compared to the reversible reaction. So that's the difference between reversible and quasi-reversible, all right? The third type of the redox mechanism that you should uh, know is the irreversible reaction. A reversible reaction means that this species can undergo, for example, just oxidation and it cannot be reduced back. Or if it can undergo reduction, then it's not going to be oxidized back. So only oxidation or reduction can occur with that species. What is the cyclic thermogram shape look like? So it looks like look like this. So for example, this is the CV of the species which can un can only undergo oxidation. So you can see that you still get the anodic peak current and anodic peak potential. But when we scan the potential back, you can see that we don't get the cathodic peak, which means that the oxidized form can't be reduced back to the reduced form. So this is actually a reversible reaction. The last type of the redox mechanism that you're going to learn here is called multi-step electron transfer, which means that these electroactive species can undergo more than one oxidation reduction step. Like, for example, if we start from the ele electroactive species here, the first oxidation step is here. And if you further increase the applied potential, you get the second peak here, which is the second oxidation. And then if you scan the potential back, you get this cathodic peak as your second reduction, actually. And if you scan it back here, you get the first reduction. So you, so you get two pairs of the anodic cathodic peaks. So that's why we can say that this electroactive species undergoes the multi-step electron transfer. Here you get two steps. Uh, however, you can see that here it depends. We don't really know which, uh, which one is the first step or the second step. So there's actually some, so some experiment needs to be done like to vary the scanning potential or the window potential, for example to see that which one is the first uh, step. Usually the largest peak gonna be the first step. So here you can see that actually this, uh, right, the right peak around 0.2 volt is actually the first oxidation and reduction. And this one, the tiny peak here is actually the second step of the oxidation and reduction. So this is the multi-step electron transfer. So uh, for further analysis of the cyclic photomogram of the standard electro so of the standard electroactive species. So here again, this is show that the slope between the applied potential and the time is the scan rate. For diffusion control reaction, so what does it mean? Diffusion control reaction means that if you remember, our electroactive species needs to undergo several steps to be 
to undergo the electron transfer step at our electrode. So it needs to undergo mass transfer, chemical reaction, or adsorption and desorption. Diffusion control reaction means that the mass transfer step or the diffusion is the rate determining step, or we can say that diffusion is the slowest step. So if your electroactive species undergoes diffusion control reaction, you, the relationship within the peak current and the scan rate is gonna, undergo, gonna be governed by the Randall Seifert equation, which is here, IP, uh, which is the peak current, is equal to 2.69 times 10 to the fifth times n to the three third times surface times A and square root of D and concentration C and square root of the scan rate. Usually we perform the experiment which we vary the scan rate and then we record the peak current, either analytic peak current or cathodic peak current. Then we plot between the peak current and the square root of the scan rate. If you get the linear relationship, then we can say that your electroactive species is diffusion control. So let's see the example. Example 3.3 here. This is the cyclic voltammetry of ascorbic acid. So we have so many CV here, which is run uh, from the different scan rate. And this inset here is the plot between the peak current and the square root of the scan rate. So this example asks you which characteristics from the data tell that ascorbic acid redox reaction is irreversible and is deficient control. So first you can see that the cyclic voltammogram here only has the anodic peak when you scan positive, but when you scan negative, you don't get the cathodic peaks. So only one peak means that ascorbic acid redox reaction is irreversible. You can only oxidize it, but not reduce it back. So that's the first point. The second point is that this inset shows that the peak current is proportional to the square root of the scan rate, which is fit with the Randall Seifert equation. So peak current is proportional to the square root of the scan rate shows that it is uh, diffusion control reaction. So you can see that cyclic voltammetry is very useful because uh, you yield a lot of redox mechanism information. And if you want to analyze uh, the character or qualitative analysis of the electroactive species from the CV shape, you can do that. But there are some limitations like the waveform uh, doesn't really increase the sensitivity or the limit of detection improvement. And to scan one CV, you need maybe at least like half a minute or more than a minute. So this is a little bit slower from other techniques like amperometry. And since cyclic voltammetry shape depends on the scan rate and the, pot the scanning potential that you choose, so there are more parameters to optimize if you compare with the amperometry. But however, if you work with electrochemistry, cyclic voltammetry is the best and the most important technique. So that gives you the fundamental information about your electroactive species that you can use to develop other electrochemical methods for that electroactive species.